If you ever struggle to cut out hair in Photoshop, this technique will help you get realistic flyaways no matter how complicated your original background is. Now since we are talking about quite a bit today, I created a free lesson cheat sheet that you can access in the description below. That way you can easily review this whole process in the future, but with that, Let's get started. Now in this photo, our subject's hair blends into the background and a lot of the edges are not easily defined. That means that Photoshop is going to have a hard time to select all of these flyaways. When you have a photo like this, you can use the Select and Mask workspace to a degree, but you'll also need to use some manual brush adjustments to update all of your flyaways and make things look realistic. Now, the first step in this process is to create a selection of your subject. For this example, I am going to use the pen tool, but you could use any method that you would like. Loading the selection that I created with the pen tool before recording this video I simply went and traced the pen path around the outer edge of my subject's shoulder, and then I went just outside of my subject's hair to create a general broad selection around all of the major flyaways. I then connected back onto her shoulder where there's a clearly defined edge, traced that edge down, and then connected back to the beginning point. Since the pen tool is outside of the scope of this lesson, if you want to learn more about how it works, check out this video here. Anyways, once you have your selection active, we're going to add a layer mask to remove the background. With that active selection, I'll click on the image layer and then go and add a layer mask. Now, of course, we have a lot of refining left to do and our cutout looks terrible. So to fix this, we can use the Select and Mask workspace. To access the Select and Mask workspace, I'm going to double click on the layer mask of my image layer. Within the Select and Mask workspace, we'll then go to the View mode, and I would recommend using the On White or On Black option while you're doing these hair refinements. For this image, I will choose the On White option, and then leave the opacity at 100%. Now in the Select and Mask workspace, we can use some of these tools like the Refine Edge Brush to remove the majority of the background from our subject's flyaways. However, I find that it works best when you refine your subject's body and then their hair as two separate adjustments in the Select and Mask workspace. So to begin, we're going to refine the fringing around my subject's shoulders here. With the Refine Edge Brush enabled, I'll make sure the brush hardness is set to 0%, and then before we go and make any adjustments, we need to choose the Refine mode. The Color Aware option is going to be better when you have a clearly defined edge and a lot of color or exposure contrast between your background and the subject. However, the Object Aware setting is going to do better when you have less defined edges, such as hair or fur, as well as when we have a little bit of blurring around an edge, I find that the Object Aware Refine mode works a little bit better. So for this example, I will use the Object Aware Refine mode, and now I can just go and paint over the edges that I want to remove that fringing from. Photoshop will do a pretty decent job, but for now we're just focusing on the shoulders here. This removed the majority of the fringing, and it still has that bit of an edge blur, which I like. Now I'll go to this little bit of hair here and refine that as well. If it goes too far into your subject shoulder like this, you can press Command or Control Z to undo that, scale down your brush to a smaller size, and then just paint over the area that you need to refine like so. Now my first round of refinements are complete, which was around my subject's body. So to exit the Select and Mask workspace and then come back into it again, we need to set the output to Layer Mask and click OK. This will apply those Select and Mask adjustments onto our image layer mask. Now we can reaccess the Select and Mask workspace once again by double clicking on that layer mask. Now we can go and refine the remaining bits of hair around our subject. The reason that I like to do this in two separate adjustments is sometimes you will want to use different refine modes for your subject's body as well as their hair. By separating these two adjustments and leaving the Select and Mask workspace in between, you can change your refine mode and make different types of adjustments to different areas of your subject. Now for this example, I'm going to continue to use the Object Aware Refine mode, but I still follow this process as a backup option in case I ever want to do separate settings for different parts of my subject. But with your mode chosen, the Refine Edge Brush tool still enabled, I'll just go and paint around my subject's hair to remove some of that background. 
Now, because we have a complex background, this is going to look pretty messy and that's okay, but the majority of our work is going to be done here. The goal is to remove that green background in this case and keep the overall shape of our subject's hair. Now with that extra background removed, I'm going to go to the output setting and make sure this is set to layer mask. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now our subject's hair obviously does not look very good. And this is where our final step in the process comes in, which is manually drawing back hair strands to rebuild some of these flyaways and make it look realistic again. Now you might be thinking that sounds like a ton of work, but it actually is relatively simple. So you can just put on some music and follow this process. Now the first thing to do is create a new layer. I'll call this layer to hair. We'll then take this hair layer and drag it below our image layer. Next, I'll grab my brush tool by pressing B, and then I'll choose a really small brush size. You can do something between three to 10 pixels, but the goal here is to create a brush that looks like a strand of hair. Next, we'll go to our brush settings panel, which if you do not see this, just go up to window and down here to brush settings to reveal it. But within this panel, go to the shape dynamic setting and assuming that you have an editing tablet, make sure that the control is set to pen pressure and then you can increase the minimum diameter until you're happy with the brush preview. This brush preview should look like a strand of hair with some tapered edges on either side. I'm going to set this somewhere between five to 10% for my minimum diameter, and that looks good for me. Now, if you don't have an editing tablet, you can still use a mouse. You just won't have that nice tapered edge, so the results will look slightly different. However, when you're using a mouse, you can still draw hair strands, but just remember to start and end your hair strands hidden behind your subject's hair. I'll show you how this works works in just a moment. But for now, just make sure all those settings are correct. And if you are using an editing tablet, make sure that the pen pressure setting is enabled in your options bar as well. Now, before we get started, I'm just going to go to the adjustments icon and create a new color fill layer and choose a dark gray color like so and drag this to the bottom of the layer stack. This will make life a little bit easier to see how the hair is looking. Now clicking on the hair layer, which is the one we want to paint on, I'm going to zoom into the image and with my brush tool still active, I want to sample a color from my subject's hair. So I'll go ahead and hold alt or option and sample a color from my subject's hair. And then I can go and paint in the background on that hair layer to paint back strands of hair. Because I have that small brush size, I'm basically creating single strands every time I paint. And the goal here is to create strands of hair that follow the shape of your subject's existing hair in the photo. After creating a few brush adjustments with that one color, hold Alt or Option, choose a new color, and then repeat this process once again. We're going to just continue to paint these hair strands into our photo to create those flyaways. Now, if you are using a mouse, like I mentioned, you don't want to go and create a hair strand that just ends out in the middle of nowhere. Instead, you want to make sure your hair strands start and finish hidden behind your subject's hair, so that way you don't see the non-tapered edge. If you're using an editing tablet, you do not have to do that because there is the pen pressure settings enabled. So just continue to sample new colors and then paint those hair strands to fill in those flyaway hairs and rebuild any missing areas. Now this is gonna take me a little bit of time, so I'm just going to speed this up while I go and repaint these flyaways into the image. Now, after a few minutes of drawing in those hair strands, turning that hair layer on and off, you can see how we have filled those areas in. But of course, there are still some problems at play. The main things being that there's a little bit of fringing left over from our original selection, as well as there's blur in our subject's hair that does not exist within the new flyaways that I just drew. So let's go ahead and fix this up. First, I'll click on my image layer mask to refine any of this leftover fringing. 
With that layer mask selected, I'll grab my brush tool by pressing B and then go and choose a soft round brush. I'll bring the flow setting down to something like 20 to 50 percent, scale up that brush using the bracket keys, and now I can just go and remove some of that excess fringing with that low flow brush. You can repeat this process around any other remaining fringing in your photo. Now with the fringing removed, let's go and add some blur to the hair that should be blurred. So clicking on the hair layer, since I don't want to make any permanent adjustments to this layer, I always want to have a backup. I'm going to click on that hair layer and press Command or Control J to duplicate it. I'll now turn off the underlying hair layer, which is now going to serve as our backup. With the duplicated hair layer selected, I can go ahead and grab the blur tool, which is nested beneath the sharpen tool. So the blur tool right here. I'll set the strength anywhere from 10 to 50% and make sure that I'm using a soft round brush. Now I can just go and paint over the hair strands that I need to blur in the photo. You can continue to paint over the hair strands to add more blur and continue to do so until it matches the look of your original image. I'll zoom in and continue this process in different parts of my subject's hair. Now the reason that I like to use the blur tool instead of the Gaussian blur filter for example is because it allows me to add different levels of blur to different parts of the hair in the image. But now with this complete, our hair is looking pretty good, but there's one final thing that we can do to add to the realism in this project, and that is adding some noise. You see, in every photo, there's always going to be a little bit of grain in the image. And if we look at the hair strands that we have just created, there is no grain. So let's go ahead and add some grain using a simple adjustment. With the hair copy layer selected, I'm going to add a new layer directly above it. With this layer selected, I'll rename it to Noise. Now I'll set my foreground color to black and press Alt or Option and Delete to fill the selected noise layer with black. I'll then go up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. I'll set the distribution to Gaussian and make sure Monochromatic is enabled. I'll reduce the amount because in this photo, there's not a ton of grain in the image, so around 10%-ish looks good for me. I'll click OK. Now looking at the background here, you can see the grain added to that black layer. But to make this only appear within the new hair strands and remove the black, we need to first add a clipping mask by right clicking on the noise layer and going to create clipping mask. Now this layer is only visible in the contents of the hair copy layer. However, to remove the black, while that noise layer is still highlighted, I'll change the layer blending mode from normal down here to screen. This removes the black and keeps that grain in the photo. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the slight difference in how that adds noise into those hair strands. If it looks too intense, while that noise layer is still highlighted, we can reduce the layer opacity as needed to hide some of that noise. So right around here looks good for this image. Turning that on and off, it just adds a very subtle bit of noise, but I think it adds a nice touch in the image. Now with all of that complete, we have successfully cut out our subject's hair. Turning this layer mask on and off, we can see the before and after. Of course, some of the flyaways look a little bit different, but that is okay because hair is random and nobody is going to know the difference. The goal here is just that the flyaways match the shape of your subject's hair, and this is now something that I would be happy to go and place into a new background, for example, and make a composite image. So admittedly, this will take some time, especially if your subject has a lot of hair, but it's the best option when your subject is against a busy background. Anyways, if you haven't already Ready, be sure to download the free lesson cheat sheet in the description below if you want to remember all of the steps that we covered here. And with that, I'll see you next time.